um, I have a video of Michael Irvin that was hurt. <laughs> Damn. Fucking win. Ow. <laughs> What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear here in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great thirsty Thursday. This week is flying literally by. Uh, what's kind of cool is now that I'm here, I don't have, I, I need to get this clock set up. I've had this one for so long. This one I have literally had um, for years now and sometimes it sticks. So I've got to see if I can remember how to program that one the right way and get it working and stuff. Maybe I'll go ahead and get one of those clocks like I have at the Red Brick House. Because what's cool is, because I'm here for a bit, I don't know exactly how many days. I think it's like 86, maybe 85 by now, that you know maybe by the time I get back, we'll be in the 70s, which would be really, really great because you hate this time of year because there's nothing going on. You know, um, I have to say, I have to give credit where credit's due. Um, a lot of people, um, especially Eagle fans, are like, you know, why is this guy on here, man? I hate Mark Holmes. But it's funny because I, I stealth watch. I don't know if you've ever stealth watched like YouTube and things. Um, stealth watching is... You watch, but you don't comment. You want to see what's going on in there. You know, it's, I guess it's kind of like peeping in the bushes or being in the bushes and peeping in the window. Um, don't want people to know that you're there. And it's funny because I watched for about an hour or two yesterday. And the amount of times that my name is just talked about, Eagle fans, Mark Holmes, Mark Holmes, Mark Holmes, Mark Holmes. It's like, wow, you make me feel important that I have literally become like a, a, a pimple on your ass that's annoying. And I love that. I love that I am constantly on their minds. In the same way, Dan Salio is making waves with the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, I don't know if they sit there and they look and they say, my God, they've got a Cowboys YouTuber on an Eagles channel who is telling the truth and, and, and opening up the blinds on how much it, our team sucks, along with Dan Salio bitch slapping them, that they don't like the negative publicity. And see, that's when you know that you are doing things right when you're pissing people off. So I'm going to definitely keep doing what I'm doing with, with them. But, you know, Dan has been around a long time. He's an old guy like me, okay? Old guy. And I don't mean that derogatorily. I don't know that that's a word or not. My wife's not here to be the spell check. But I don't mean it to be derogatory. I say that because when you're older, when you've been around, you know a lot more than the guy who hasn't been around. You've experienced things. You have more knowledge than that dude that's, you know, pasty in the basement of his mom's house. You just know a lot more. So he said, he said, Dak Prescott will not win a Super Bowl with the Dallas Cowboys. And he said... The reason being is because when Troy Aikman, and this is where a lot of people say, well, Dak Prescott's not Troy Aikman, you know, or Roger Staubach. He pointed out something that's so obvious, but it's true. The Cowboys with Troy Aikman, Troy was great. Let's make, let me make sure I don't get the haters from here saying, now you're disrespecting Troy Aikman. No, I'm not disrespecting Troy Aikman. But everything was not put on Troy Aikman's shoulders. Troy Aikman was a cog in the machine because he had others to rely on. You had the NFL all-time leading running back. All-time leading running back. You had Hall of Fame wide receiver in Michael Irvin. 
you had one of the best offensive lines in the history of football. You had a great defense. There were times where you needed Troy Aikman to be able to light up and have two or three touchdown passes and be that guy. There were other times, like against the Giants, when Emmett Smith broke his arm or separated his shoulder, and he rushed for 189 yards because that's what the team needed. There were other times where your defense ended up getting two interceptions in a Super Bowl to make the game easy. You had all of these things that there were different things to rely on. There was, as you would say, like an airplane where there's triple redundancy. So if this cable snaps, there's another one to take its place. And if that one goes, there's another one to go. That you're not relying on just that one snap or cable. And see, that's what the Cowboys have been. And that's what the fans have become to expect is you got one guy and that was true with Tony Romo because either we won with Tony Romo or we lost with Tony Romo. There was no triple redundancy with the exception of 2014. 2014 and probably you could say 2007. Those two years you had DeMarco Murray who set the Cowboys all season, all, all time single season record. And you could look at 2007 when you had uh, Marion Barber, who was beasting, and T.O. and all those guys, where you looked and said, yeah, this is not just the quarterback. But that's where we are now. Most teams, you, 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 would, you, would you imagine if you were the commanders and you had a quarterback who threw 36 TDs and nine interceptions? 36 TDs and nine interceptions and was a runner up for MVP. Could you imagine if you were the Jets who right now have Aaron Rodgers and they paid him a boatload of money for one series, who's on vacation during OTAs, who, in, excuse me, minicamp, during OTAs, he looked like he was running lane. Imagine if they had a quarterback that threw 36 TDs and nine interceptions with the talent that's all around the board there. Dan is 100% right. You're relying on one guy and one guy only. And the reality is, it doesn't matter. You can get rid of Dak and bring somebody else in. But as long as that philosophy is there, you're not going to win one. There's no quarterback that wins Super Bowls by themselves. The great Aaron Rodgers won one. One. He's been MVP, what, three times? One, one. One, one. So here's another one of these silly season ones. I woke up this morning, thank the Lord, because, you know, there's no guarantees that you're going to wake up. And I see this article, replay, uh, Super Bowl winning quarterback to replace Dak Prescott. I was like, what? Let, 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 me, let me open this clickbait. And I open it up and lo and behold, guess who they have to replace Dak Prescott? They have Russell Wilson. <laughs> And they say, and it's funny because I'm reading this whole article, reading this whole article, and I'm like, okay, let me humor this one. They, of course, go on and say that if Russell Wilson turns it around because the last two years have been awful, that, you know, the Steelers will probably look to sign him for a nice contract, which would make sense. And they were saying that the Cowboys could bring in Russell Wilson to replace Dak Prescott. And I'm just kind of like, okay. So Russell Wilson is older. He did win a Super Bowl. But mind you, when he won the Super Bowl, I think they had 23 TD passes. And they had Beast Mode, who rushed for like 1,300 yards. And, oh, they had the number one defense in yardage, points, and takeaways. 
So you can look exactly what Dan pointed out that Russell Wilson was a cog in the machine. He wasn't the machine. When Russell Wilson had to be the machine, when the defense wasn't as good and beast mode was gone, he got a lot of yards, a lot of points and things, but they weren't winning Super Bowls anymore. So the question now for, for the day, you know, we don't have much going on right now. So we're going to NFL Live is putting the question out there is Micah Parsons creating issues in June with his new defensive coordinator. I think um, I like the idea of Mike Zimmer um, being here, if for no other reason, for accountability. I think when you allow mistakes to happen without repercussions, they end up becoming habits. And those habits end up becoming faults. Make no mistake about it. In football, you got to play damn near perfect to win. You can't have mistakes. And I think that Mike Zimmer is not going to let him get away with it. I don't know how those results are going to work out, but I feel good about it. Let's listen in. Parsons still waiting on contract extensions. Also big changes on the defense as Mike Zimmer takes over after Dan Quinn got the commander's head coaching job. Here's Parsons on his new D.C. Honestly, man, me and Zim probably said a total of 20 words to each other. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a very quiet person. And all I keep hearing from the coaches is like, Zim likes it this way. I was like, well, I like it this way. Like, you know, so I can't wait to have like my true like sit down with him. I think it'll be pretty cool. Because obviously, old school mindset, old school mentality. Um, but, you know, I think he has a lot of great players, but he ain't never had a mic before. I don't know, Marcus. Th- this one had me raising my eyebrows. What do you think of what Micah said? I mean, just don't say it. Mm. <laughs> like, it, it, bro, listen, I, you can say what you want to say, but yeah, I, I know what people get all in their feelings about that, but. To me, this is stuff that 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 kind of defines Dallas, right? Like this is a sound bite where you literally can take something away from this and say there's already a rift in the ideology of what they want to do. For Micah to say that with Mike Zimmer coming in, you don't know if either one of them, based on the other, what the other one says, is going to take it personal. And now you already have a rift in the working relationship before you can get started good. And I, I know Zim, Zim has a quote out there saying, I'm, it's going to be my way. So I just don't like this from the standpoint of Dallas, especially when you're talking about your hey. star defensive player with a new offensive coordinator coming in. Micah is different, right? A lot of people in, the, in, in, in Dallas understands that the league, he has a microphone. He likes to talk about everything, not just football. He likes to talk about everything. I'm for that. Go on with that. I just think this is something that could really cause an issue if it's not an understanding between him and Mike Zimmer. And based on what he just said, they don't have that understanding yet Hmm. because they've only said 20 words to each other. So I hope this is not creating something between the best defensive player and the new defensive coordinator coming in, not seeing eye to eye and having a different view on how Mm -hmm. things should go in Dallas. Yeah, Mar- Marcus, it's a great point. And I, you understand Dallas, obviously. Like, the, the reality is, like, sometimes guys got to know, like, when there's going to be a sound bite. Like, you, like you should know at this yeah. point in your career, if you're Micah Parsons, that this is going to be a sound bite. Like, like, this is how that should go. Hey, how's it going with your new defensive coordinator? It's great, man. Excited to, excited to get going with them. Like, he's great. <laughs> Like that's, that's it. it. Like, like, is he great? That's Who it. knows? You know what I mean? Like, do you think he's great? Who knows? But, like, but, like, everyone's moving on. It's not a sound bite. And to your point, Marcus, like, now all of a sudden, like, it doesn't it feel like catching feelings in this? You know, is that is that how yeah. this is going? Is there now a misunderstanding? Like, and you don't need it. My guess is that. Listen, you know, Mike Zimmer have like a funny comment. Everything's cool. Smooth it out. Like he's been around. He knows how it works. He's had high maintenance players before and gotten along great with them. Now, Mm -hmm. I will say this. 
Typically, what can happen is guys are in the offseason, players trying to get in and out of the facility, coaches trying to get a little bit of downtime as well. Coaches and players really develop bonds when the guy is playing well when it matters. There you like go. When the defense coordinator knows during the season against a division opponent if he can really trust you. And if that, that player feels like, yep, in a critical moment, He's putting something on me. Like, that's when, like, the, the bonds and, and the mutual respect really come in. Yeah. Not necessarily in June, but don't create an issue in June if you don't have to. Yeah, I mean, Micah's talent certainly is incredible, and we've seen that on the mm -hmm. field. I want to know who's counting the words. Like, do we have a word counter? It's exactly at 20. <laughs> we'll see if it expands. <laughs> Jeff, we have to ask this every day, by the way. It's a big deal, okay? Any progress on an extension for Micah, Dak Prescott, or C.D. Lamb? No. <laughs> is that... Does that answer it? I think we're at the no point where bite. just no. Does no, no. One word. <laughs> exactly, Marcus. Thank you. We've got to be careful out here. No. Yeah. No. No movement. Okay, well, the fact that you could have such economy of words, we're going to leave it right there. When Mike Zimmer was the coach of the Vikings from 2014 to 2021, Jeez. Minnesota led the NFL in both third down percentage and red zone conversion percentage. Dallas ranked outside the top 10 in both in 2023. I wanted to say that because we had to make up some words because Jeff only just said no. All right, there you have it. Is there a problem? Is there a problem between Micah Parsons or will there be one? Um, that is a good question. Stay tuned to find out. As always, good people, um, I want to say thank you all for being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you, it really does not work. Peace out. Our coach here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. This is one hell of a and the only thing else I got to say is, how about